The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. It is Fed Day. We got an announcement 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Press conference with Chairman Powell, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. All but ex expected they will stay the course in terms of no cuts, no hikes, probability wise coming down the line. But boy, it's going to be interesting to see what the chairman has to say about those next meetings. The March meeting, March 20th, coming down the line as well. We will find out at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. We kick things off. A little bit of negative action. The trio last night, Microsoft, AMD, and Google. Last I checked, I think they're all trading down slightly right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 off 200 points. We jump to Microsoft shares. There's a little bit of volatility for you. We're going to go through the indices, but you got to get to these three to kick things off. Microsoft right now, only down about $2. Pretty decent earnings from Microsoft, man. We'll get into them. AMD, a little bit of a different story. They guide a little bit lower than what you're thinking in the next quarter. And Google, a little bit of a different story as well, man. Look at that drop off from about 153 to 144 this morning. 44 this morning. So to put those in context, that's the reason why you got a little negative action to kick things off. It's to be about half a percent off 27 points. We got a lot this morning. We got ADP. We got uh, loans. We have bonds going with market in terms of borrowing. We have a lot, to put it lightly. NASDAQ 100. There's your acceleration from last night. We were at about 17,600. We're at about 17,400 right now. 17,390. We're off by 1.1 percent. The Dow in positive territory, up by 40 points, up by a tenth of a percent in the Russell. Negative by three, sitting right just above 2,000. Bitcoin pulls back a bit. We were up to 44,000 and change yesterday. We're back to 42,880. Crude, a little bit of volatility as well. We're back above $77. We were just below that level. We're negative by 56 cents on the session. You see the volatility yesterday, right? 8.30 in the morning, we're under 76. You make it above 78. We're sitting at 77.29. You jump over to gold. Gold, up another $10, man, to 2060. You hit 2068 yesterday. You jump over to silver. Silver this morning, basically flat. You're up by four pennies, 23.26. And you jump over to notes and bonds. What do we got? You got higher price. You got lower yield. And we got a 10-year, 4.01%. We'll call it 4% for even numbers, man. The yield on that 10-year, 4%. As we come into a very important day for the Federal Reserve with their announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time, as I mentioned, and press conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time to follow. We will stream that press conference live on the air today. My dad will be back in the chair from 3 till 4 today as well. So it'll be good action. We're going to have live action across the board, man. Dollar index, weaker yields, weaker dollar, right? That's what's going to happen, folks. When we see these yields pull back, you're going to see dollar weakness. Yes, anything can happen, okay? Those relationships uh, don't have to exist in perpetuity. But guess what? That's the way the world works, man. If there are lower yields in the U.S., you're going to have less demand to pursue those yields. Therefore, you're going to need less dollars to pursue those yields in the notes and bonds. And we have yields dropping at about 4%, 103.24 on the dollar index this morning. And let's jump over the VIX. 1325. Now, remember, the VIX is predicated on the SPY, folks. Okay? It's not predicated on the NASDAQ 100. You check out the VIX on the NASDAQ 100, you're going to probably see some elevated levels because the volatility going on in some of those tech stocks with the NASDAQ 100, down almost 200 points to kick things off. And let's get into it, man. And where do we kick it off? Let's do it with Microsoft, biggest company in the world out there. And they get through their earnings is one way to put it. And boy, we're going to talk to our man Kevin Hinks coming up after the first break. He put it well yesterday talking about P.E. ratios, right? Talking about growth, talking about that Azure cloud. Folks, they did not decelerate their growth, which is an amazing feat when you think about the fact that they were growing at 29% the previous quarter and the Azure cloud service is now growing at 30%. My goodness. Revenue, company-wide, rising 18% to $62 billion. The profit, $2.93 a share. 
Market was looking for about 278 a share on 61.1 billion, so they beat across the board. And yeah, and they just chop around. So that's you know that's a great indication though, man, of the expectations on these equities. You see the volatility spike. That 416 spike probably had to do with the pickup. The fact that I mean, you don't have to be a genius in order in order to to cherry pick what you're going to look for on that earnings event. And what you wanted to look for was what is their growth in cloud? Initially, what is their growth in cloud? 30% versus 29, trade me higher. But it's short lived and we're actually coming in almost flat from Microsoft shares on the open at above 408. Important to remember how far this thing has risen. We back it up a year ago to 242, we're sitting at 408. Just last earnings, right? We were at about 325. So you survive the earnings that they had to in terms of expectations, sky high for this equity, to put it lightly, right? And they have a lot of talk here in terms of what's going to happen in the future. They're going to bake AI into a variety of marquee products, including Azure, Office, Windows, starting to pay off. Yeah, my goodness. 30% for Azure, to put it lightly. Yeah, jumping around. Let's see, we had ADP. All right, we're going to jump to AMD in a second because that's a different story. They got some problems. Here we go. This is the chart I wanted to get to before we do. These are your sky high expectations, okay? You got Microsoft in the black here. You have Alphabet Google in the red. You have AMD in the blue, and you got the S&P in the green, okay? This is going back normalized as of January of 2023. Okay, this is just going back a year, folks, just 12 months. You see the S&P above 20%. You see Google pushing almost 60. You got Microsoft up there at 70% returns, and you have AMD up there at 140% returns. We know the chip stocks have been bonkers, okay? So we go over Microsoft. They survived their earnings. What's happening with AMD, you ask? Not the same deal, man. All right, AMD is going to have some issues here, folks. Here's the run up on AMD. Now what's interesting here is they already completed their A to B, C to D. I've been talking about this on the program recently. Some of the other equities have a little bit more room to go. AMD has completed. You back it up on a three year weekly. Your A point, about 60 bucks. Your B point, the highs back there in the middle of 2023, you're talking about about 132. That's about a $72 run from your A point to your B point. You pull all the way back to the price of about 94. And yeah, that's gonna push you to about 168, folks. We're opening at 165, so you're already below that level, but AMD, tough go around. We jump over to them, and what do they got going on? Weak forecast overshadows prospects. You don't want to be forecasting weak right now when you're up 140% over the last 12 months, folks. They follow Intel, a downbeat sales outlook, the push into NVIDIA-style processors still early in the days, and yeah, they got a miss, man. So first quarter revenue is going to come in at $5.4 billion. The market was looking for 5.77. Do you remember how NVIDIA has been crushing it to the tune of just like billions of dollars in a beat? No, they missed, folks. They missed by $400 million in 90 days coming up. The 90 days we're in right now, okay? And yeah, analysts had estimated and echoed. We're talking about a downbeat. They're lower, and we're gonna get into this, man, because they're looking for weak numbers compared to what the market's looking for. Be careful on AMD, folks. We're going to talk some Google. we got a lot of equities to cover. We're coming back with our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have markets in negative territory with the S&Ps off 26, NASDAQ 100 off about 196. You get the Dow up 83 points. To talk about some of the market action, folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. You can check out Fast Market from the Schwab Network every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, 12 noon Eastern time. We're right in the heat of earnings season. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. If you ever want to learn about options, you want to learn about premium, uh, great time to do it as you're in earnings season. And we're in the thick of it. And the market digesting some earnings this morning. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, a lot going on on a Fed day. Um, I'm sure the focus... Late this morning, we'll switch to the Fed. But right now, the market a little soft. We're we're looking at economic data, not crazy big data, but uh, 80 a bit light at 107,000 jobs. Uh, employment cost index, one something the Fed looks at in terms of compensation, was slightly lower than expected, up 0.9 for the quarter and 4.2 percent for the year. Uh, but interesting, Tommy, you've got Microsoft, AMD, and Google Alphabet down. you got Starbucks, Boeing, and Skyworks up this morning. So the Zaro stock market, as they're selling the things that have rallied up and buying the things that have sold off, frankly. Yeah, remarkable. we got the NASDAQ 100, man. You're off more than a percent right now, 1.1. Meanwhile, you got the Dow in positive territory as we inch towards 38,700 on the Dow futures right now on that thinkorswim platform. Microsoft, man, we talked about it yesterday. Remarkable. They come in with 30% growth, Kevin. We talked about the market hates decelerating growth. They're not doing decelerating growth right now. 30% from Microsoft. They take it in stride. Expectations, like you said, were sky high, but they meet those expectations, at least pre-market, as you're chopping around near yesterday's close. Uh, I wanted to get your take, if you will, on AMD, because they seem like, you know, Google's lower as well. But AMD, man, up almost like 140% the last year and seems like they missed the mark on their forecast. Uh, what do you think about some of those numbers, man, as you got AMD down about $8, it looks like, pre-market from where they were yesterday? First and foremost, all those three companies that you mentioned, uh, Microsoft, AMD, and Google Alphabet, all had spectacular numbers. But these stocks have run a long way. Microsoft numbers were impressive, but the valuations are what aren't there yet. And so, you know, Microsoft, frankly, isn't down that much to start the day. AMD's down a little more. Tommy, these stocks have run so far. The valuations are so high that, again, 
like I've said before, at some point I want to be long every stock. At some point I want to be short every stock, Tommy. It's a great point, man, and 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 we hear it often, and I appreciate you preaching it often because people got to hear it because not a lot of people hear it, man, and it's remarkable, the expectations on these equities. I mean, you look at it like we talked about yesterday, 30% growth. They're accelerating growth in the cloud, and the stock doesn't move up, which is, I think that says a lot when you're dealing with the numbers that they're dealing with, tens of billions of dollars and growing them at about 30%. I mean, company-wide, I think they had something like 18% revenue growth, just bonkers from Microsoft, the company that they are. As you mentioned, man, we take that in stride. As we move towards the day, we're going to move uh, towards 2 p.m. Eastern time today with Chairman Powell. You talked about some of the numbers we got this morning. Wages not going up as much as we may have seen in the past, to put it lightly, on those ADP numbers. We got the jobs on Friday. As a trader, if you, you, where's your head at for this afternoon? Come 2, 2.30, probably going to be the main event with the press conference to follow. Yeah. How does Jerome Powell's comments <laughs> affect March, May, second half of the year. That's what uh, we'll, we'll have a better picture of by the end of the day. Now, he's going to say data dependent, and the market is just... but, 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 but. So I think Jerome Powell historically has been a good delivery mechanism for data. He's a little tired. He's got... Yields that have come significantly down on their highs. It's going to be interesting how he keeps the nut member. He's only got one fear, and that is reigniting inflation. So does he speak uh, hawkishly or middle of the road? Or does, remember, the last time it's pretty dumbish. Does he stay with that? That's what we'll know around 2.30 Eastern. And uh, it's going to be the main event, that's for sure, at least today. And then we just march forward with some more earnings and some more jobs numbers. Pretty action-packed week, to put it lightly. With that in mind, I know you guys talk some equities on the program Fast Market at 12. Kevin, do you got a few equities lined up for today's program? We're going to talk Qualcomm today. Uh, like Foley is going to do a presentation on uh, Royal Caribbean, the, the cruise lines, which are on fire lately. And then we'll get Honeywell a big industrial that we don't talk about very much, but we'll look at Honeywell in the final segment. So gearing up for tomorrow's another big day of earnings release, but Qualcomm today and RCL and Honeywell, Tommy. Nice. And look at Royal Caribbean, man. Look at the run this thing is on, right? From 40 bucks last year. Yeah, I had to check, make sure I had the right equity. Up to 126 I tell you, Kevin, we take, I take Tommy to the Tampa Aquarium occasionally. Uh, it's called the Florida Aquarium, right in the middle of Tampa, right at the port there. We were there a week ago. We're going down the elevator from the parking garage. Two layers there. Enormous ship out there. And yeah, it's a Royal Caribbean ship. They're going on a four-day trip to Cozumelis. I'm going to have to check that out, man. Nice ship right there. Anyway, Royal Caribbean. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate the time. The mornings don't get much better busier than this morning, man. We look forward to the program Fast Market at 12 today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a good day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure, folks. Check it out. Great commentary, as always. We appreciate Kevin coming on. They'll do Fast Market at 12 today, and you heard it. They're talking three great stocks, and look at that acceleration, man. Look at that. Right, right back up to where we were at the beginning of COVID. Absolutely remarkable. You get that double bottom down there. Don't tell me technicals don't matter, man, when you're talking about a level. We reached 3109, and yeah, you got a couple tails there that bring you down to 22 bucks and 19 at the heart when COVID was uh, ceasing to exist in terms of travel, cruises, and you get it all back, man. Royal Caribbean up to 126. And yeah, we got a nice port in Tampa, man. Occasionally, when we go to the aquarium, which is right there in the middle of that port area, you got a couple cruise ships, and it's always cool because they look so big. And in the grand scheme of things, they're probably not gigantic in terms of Royal Caribbean. You know, you're only talking about a cruise ship that's doing a four-day to Cozumel. Nonetheless, they're full, man. We saw everybody getting on that ship. And, yeah, the chart would say it for Royal Caribbean. All right, we jump back to the market as we get the tech stocks continuing to slide. NASDAQ 100 off 203 right now. We jump back. Let's see where we're doing. Microsoft shares. We got a lot to talk about, man. We haven't even talked about Elon Musk getting a retroactive $55 billion pay cut overnight. How about that, right? Microsoft shares down about $2 to 406.48. We jump to AMD shares, 164.76. Now, boy, this thing's five bucks off the lows, okay? So they're not out of the woodworks yet in terms of the market. Buying the dip. And let's just jump back real quick to those AMD numbers. The part I wanted to get to, which I didn't quite get to, 
Yeah, so they're coming for NVIDIA, of course. Uh, they're talking about the MI300 processors that can challenge the dominance of NVIDIA and its H100, that's NVIDIA's chips, okay? You get into the numbers here, okay? Yeah, here's the, uh, no, all right, I'm gonna find it during the break. Here we are, these are the numbers I wanna hear. So AMD is predicting sales of more than $3.5 billion of the MI300 this year. Okay, that's up from an earlier forecast of $2 billion. But here's the kicker as we come into the break, folks. Wall Street had predict been predicting numbers as high as $8 billion. Keep that in mind when you look at this stock on this equity, where they go from there. Okay, they had an earlier forecast of $2 billion, but NVIDIA has set the bar extremely high when they are beating expectations sometimes by billions and billions of dollars. Uh, AMD, not quite yet. Nonetheless, we're slightly in the red. It's gonna be an interesting open. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, folks, we got markets open right now. You got an S&P down about 25 points. You got the NASDAQ 100 off 203. Let's get the first glimpse of how these equities are trading. Microsoft, biggest equity in the world or positive territory. Congrats to Microsoft shares trading higher. That is our growth, man. Just remarkable. As Kevin put it, remarkable numbers across the board, but expectations are everything. But when you're accelerating growth 
in Azure, absolutely wild. Now, we're, we're jumping around, okay, but I'm gonna get back to Microsoft for a second. AI demand boosted that growth, okay? And this is talking about revenue growth, okay? Talking about Azure Cloud jumped 30%. AI demand boosted that growth, growth rate by six percentage points. That's the CFO talking about. That was up from three percentage points the previous quarter. So the last quarter, AI boosted cloud growth by 3%. This quarter, it boosts it by 6%, okay? It is extraordinary. You shouldn't have to have an analyst tell you that that's absolutely extraordinary, that they're accelerating that growth up when you're dealing with the numbers that you are, okay? Microsoft did not disclose how much it expected AI to bolster Azure in the current period. Now, at some point, they're not gonna be able to accelerate it, man, so be careful, okay? We're at the early ages and this is going to take a while. This is the last part of the Microsoft story I wanted to get to, okay? Despite momentum, Wall Street wanted more clarity on how much AI will contribute to the financial performance going forward. Well, I wouldn't say much. They didn't want much more. Microsoft is positive after the run they've had. Investors want them to quantify the AI potential over the next couple of years. Well, of course they do, okay? Investors want everything to be laid out in forecasts so they can model those forecasts to the price of the equity and then they can go forward. If you're not forecasting, it's very difficult. In terms of AI contribution from Microsoft, okay, that's not the way this is going to work. And he's talking about how NVIDIA's just crushed it already with sales exploding, okay? This is going to be a slower slog than maybe some might have anticipated. So heed those warnings, man, okay? They're growing at 3%. They're growing at 6% quarter by quarter on AI Azure. They're growing at 30% in Azure right now in completion. And they're talking about, hey, be careful here because this isn't going to happen overnight. We're going to incorporate this. It's going to be a slower slog as we go forward, to put it lightly, right? Man, pretty remarkable. Nonetheless, Microsoft shares positive territory, basically flat. AMD, different story, down about 4%. But again, this equity is around 140%, okay? You jump over to Google shares. They're down by 5.7%. Now you jump to the other side of that. You got Boeing shares. They're up by 3% right now. 206.40 from a low of about 198 pre-market. You jump over to Starbucks shares. They are higher. They give back some of that gain. You're up about 3.3% to kick things off for Starbucks shares. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as we jump around. All right. What else do we have? Now, we have our man, Teddy Kegstack, coming up next break, folks. We're going to talk some Forex. We, Wednesdays are a great day, man. We always got so many great earnings, uh, excuse me, economic stuff happening, right? It's Fed Day. And on top of that, we got some action across the board with earnings. But what I want to talk about is I want to talk a little bit of jobs. So we get the jobs number on Friday, right? ADP is out today. Private payrolls, U.S. companies add fewer jobs than forecast. Now, this is the argument that the Fed has to get going here, Okay. We're seeing weakness, we're seeing inflation decelerate, still there, but it's decelerating, right? And the Fed has the potential to lay the groundwork today for those cuts, okay? They don't have the potential to start cutting today. They just haven't laid it out. They don't want to surprise the market to that degree. Next meeting's March 20th, my birthday, don't forget it. And uh, that's the one that all the attention's gonna be on when Chairman Powell starts speaking at 2.30 Eastern time, but private payrolls, 107,000 in January, down, excuse me, from a downwardly revised 158. So down from 158 in December, which was also downwardly revised. Median estimate was looking for about 150,000. Nominal wage growth continuing to slow, and that's the last number I'm gonna get to here. You got to talk about wages. Annual wage increases for workers who switch jobs 7.2% in January, the smallest gain since May of 2021. Pay growth also cooling for people that stay in the same jobs. Now, I remember, folks, when those numbers were 7% for staying in the same job and 14% for changing jobs. So the trajectory is on the Fed side here, but when are they gonna make that change? Now, you jump over to the CME Fed Watch tool, okay? Now, I'm gonna walk you through this real briefly. I'm gonna post this in the Tiger's Den as well. I posted it a couple days ago. It's a cool tool to play with, man, to see where the market is. And boy, this market's got some expectations here when you talk about cuts that are priced in. First, we look at today's meeting, okay? This is the target rate probabilities for the meeting today, January 31st, 2024, last day in January. 98% chance they don't move. 2.1% chance they cut. One out of 50 shot they cut. Yeah, that's probably real, right? You gotta have a little bit of a tail risk 
out there. So there's about a 2.1% chance they cut. And the range they're at right now is five and a quarter to 5.5%. That is the FOMC rate, five and a quarter to 5.5. Okay, remember that. We're on the top left. We're looking at the January meeting. Let's go out to March because this is what they're going to be talking about. Okay, in March, the market's pricing in 44.6% chance they stay, 54.3% chance they cut, and there's an outlier risk that somehow they cut twice by the time we get to that March meeting, resulting in a 50 basis point cut. Probably not likely, but you see the case, man. The market, already a probability greater than 50% that they're possibly going to cut in March. And if they're going to cut in March, you're going to hear some words this afternoon from Chairman Powell to give you those expectations to get the market rolling. <clears throat> now, this is where things get really interesting, in my opinion. You get out to May, less than a 10% chance the Fed has not cut by May. Okay, Only a 10% chance that when we get the May meeting, May 1st, that the Fed still remains where they are. And where are they going to be? The market is just really up in the air with whether we're going to get one cut or two cuts by May. That's right. 46% chance that we get one cut by May. 42% chance that you get a March and a May cut. Most probable likely scenario to get two cuts by then. You want to keep going? Let's keep going, man, because we talked about the June meeting, right? Maybe they start cutting in June. Boy, the market doesn't think that's possible, man. There is only an 8% chance, folks. Check this out. There is a 0% chance right now. Five and a quarter to 5.5% does not show up on this chart because it is a 0% chance in terms of what is priced in for cuts. Okay? By June, there's only an 8% chance that they've only cut once. There's a 45% chance that they have 50 basis points of cuts by the June meeting, and there is a 45% chance as well that by the time we get the June meeting, there are three cuts. I think the market's getting a little bit ahead of themselves, but I'm trying to just show you how remarkable what is priced into this market. So get ready, folks. It is coming, right? There's a 50-50 chance that by June, we either get two cuts or three in the market right now. Doesn't mean it's going to play out. The market has been fantastically wrong on many occasions. But when you start going down the line, and let's go to July. You go further than that, things just get bonkers, okay? By July, 45% chance we get three cuts by July. 38% chance we get a full percentage point of cuts by July. Much more aggressive than what the Fed has indicated, but we might get an update. We don't get dot plots today or anything like that. But boy, keep your eye on this man. Going to be interesting to see what this looks like as of 3 p.m. Eastern time today after the chairman has spoken, maybe by 4 o'clock Eastern time today. Yeah. All right, we jump to yields. On the heels of that, look at this thing, man. Higher price, rocking, as we got the 10-year right now flirting with about 4%. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to be talking some currencies. We'll talk some commodities. We're coming back with Teddy Kegstad. Don't go away, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well. So it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got action everywhere right now. s and is off by 26. And look at the action in yields, man. As we jump around, we got the 10-year spiking now up 24 ticks. You have a yield under 3.96, man. Things are moving quickly. You jump over to the dollar index. We're down. We're going to get a 102 handle by the time we talk to Teddy. And let's do it. Folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Right under the newsletter, newsletter tab, you can find the Tiger Forex report, Teddy's outstanding report he puts out every Monday with updates throughout the week when warranted. And don't forget, he's got a couple of great webinars out there under the services tab, talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads, as well as Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. And it's always, I always say, Wednesday's a great day, Teddy. We got some action, and boy, we got some action today. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, uh, quite the move. Let's let's kick it off if we can with with maybe yields. Um, okay. Boy, we got the drop going on. I mean, we, you tell me where you want to kick it off. I know they're all related, but boy, we have a three point sure. nine five handle. Three point sure. nine five handle, and by the time I let you talk, we may have the dollar index with a one oh two handle, Teddy. Right. Um, what do you want? Where do you want to kick it off, man? Well, I think interest rates is really obviously the place to start with today since it's sure. Fed Day. So it. um, and I've been watching them all week very tightly. And the one thing I noticed, especially on Monday and yesterday particularly, was that the euro – now, not to confuse the euro dollar currency, the euro dollar future, okay? That's the interest okay. rate future, okay? Because there is a euro currency future. This is the okay. interest rate. That's a very short term – that's a very long term – short it's a short term rate that has multiple months over multiple years okay so then i looked at the 2 year the 5 year the 10 and the 30 year interestingly enough the short terms were really leading the charge yesterday meaning that the spreads were out of whack okay and they they started to catch up mid morning which meant now when a spread is out of whack what that means is that there a spread is normally trading along either trending whatever but when it gets out of whack it totally breaks away from that line okay so yesterday that happened okay the short terms were driving <clears throat> yield, <clears throat> yields down the 30 year was dragging okay then all of a sudden you could see in the currencies that they were beaten up. So what's the reality with that? Well, the short terms weren't budging. What, then, then it was a nice little buy trade there, meaning sell versus the dollar. So like the, you saw euro and the pound and a couple of their currencies. They've been going sideways, but intraday they started to lift because those interest rate spreads started to come back in play. Today – Fast forward, we are now back in line. When I say that we're back in line, it means like if you look at it, like you can pretty much eyeball it on a daily basis when they start to move and when you have to look at the relationships. The bonds will have typically, let's say if they're up 21 ticks, the 10 year will be up 15. The same is kind of like for like the two year and the five year. So let's say the two year is up. 
or, or let's say the five year is up 10 ticks. Well, the two year is going to be probably up about six ticks, okay, five ticks. So in that relationship, they're pretty much back in line coming into the meeting. So I like the stability of pricing, even though we're trending into it. And I think that's where you got to be careful because right now, if you look at a daily basis, we have a short term self stingle starting in the dollar index today because they've been they were trend, coming off of a, of a swing low. They started correcting back to the upside, but we've been going sideways for two weeks. You know, it's been a very tough trade. If you really look at the charts, they're very tight. They haven't really been going anywhere. Everything's been wedging, you know, and there's a lot of expectations that now we're going to start seeing this dovishness and stuff like that. I would be very, very careful. I think that the market is so far ahead of themselves and what they're predicting in the future. It's, it's, it's nonsensical. Here's the main reason why. Why was the Fed doing what they were doing for the past year and a half anyhow? To stop inflation, correct? Numbers have maybe, they've, inflation supposedly is slowing down and what have you, but we're starting to see some upticks. What happens if you cut rates, okay? If the theory is right that raising rates cuts and slows inflation, we're gonna start to accelerate inflation, okay? So now if you start to accelerate inflation by cutting rates, what's that going to do? Well, you're going to shake up the market for sure. You know, I mean, you may see lower interest rates, but here's the other thing too is people think that if we have lower interest rates, the real estate market's going to get a jump start. Actually, the opposite's going to happen because what's going to happen is now people may be able to get financed, but people are going to raise their prices. <laughs> so you're going to see inflation in real estate also. So I think the Chairman Powell is in a very, very sticky situation with the S&Ps on their highs. You know, rates reflectively without them cutting have come back significantly since the fall. You know, I mean, the public may not like it and the, and the media may not like it, but that's the reality. It's a mathematical reality, you know. So I think that we have to really watch the tone that comes out of the Fed. I would be stunned if they do anything hawkish today, let alone even speak of it in the next like couple of weeks either. You know, so that being said, I think it's going to be a very tough sideways trade today. We were talking about that last week and it really is that it's become a, a little wedge. So I wait for a breakout because we really right now there's some you're going to probably have a lot of false signals that are going off right now. And I would just you know, I don't think you're going to get the follow through until we have a confirmation after today, because remember, it's a free trade after today. The Fed doesn't meet again for another two months. Yeah, it's uh, some great points, man. I can't wait to see what he has to say. Quite the, the, the tightrope that he has to walk. Um, pretty remarkable that you get yields under four percent in terms of, you know, where are we going to move to even if you know the market's pricing in a lot as you said the expectations are pretty mm -hmm. sky high when you look at where we've come with yields we're under four percent we were over five percent at one point so you talk about quite a recalibration on some of those expectations and boy when you look at where the fed um just where the market is pricing in some of those cuts man very aggressive in terms of three four cuts coming in uh, potentially by like the middle of the year almost, which is just uh, going to be here before we know it. Watch, so we get watch the option markets because that's where, see, you got to remember, they put all these numbers out. Well, trades are put on based off of these expectations, you know, especially when they're coming from sources like the CME and stuff like that. You know, um, it, I hate to tell you, like, just because it's coming from the CME doesn't make it the gold standard, you know? Sure. So, I mean, believe me, none of them are stepping out saying that this is what's going to be the future. <laughs> that's for sure, you know? know so um now i think you're going to see a lot of option activity you know and i would w be careful you know with the with the s and p's on its highs like that i mean think about this if if you know rates start to get cut you know yeah, it's good for bond portfolios because they've already seen an uptick since the fall. You know that all the money that comes in up until, you know, everyone's tax money is still coming in this month, you know. So where are they rolling that into? You know, they're rolling it into bond funds. They're, you know, they've been rolling it into the stock market. So be cautious with this January effect rally, you know, also, yeah. you know. So that's another thing I think we have. Well, yeah. it'll be interesting where we're at next week when we can really get a gauge on things. Oof. And it, it, like you say, I mean, just sitting at 5,000 in the S&P when we've been on a hiking cycle for almost two full years, which is remarkable, um, mm -hmm. almost to your point in terms of, well, where do we go from here? As in, we've already accelerated the highs. Not usually the case when we're at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent, and we've been here for a while, and they've been hiking for two years. So what happens when they start to cut? We find out. Exactly. Uh, can we jump to maybe crude, Teddy? Sure. As we got Absolutely. crude, a little bit of an elevated level. We've been talking about kind of, you know, that five. We inched to actually 79 on some geopolitical action this weekend, and we're back to 77. You know what, Teddy? I have a quick break coming up. Can you hang with us, yep. and we'll finish it up yep. with crude? How's that? 
All right. Sounds Spoke, great. Stay tuned. We got crude sitting right at 77 bucks as we speak. And yeah, up to 79.29. We're going to finish the conversation with our man, Teddy Kegstat. When we get back, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back in three minutes. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off by 32, jumping around real quick to those tech companies. Microsoft is flat right now. You got AMD shares. They catch a bid on the open, down by 2.4%. Right now, you got Google shares in the red by 6.1%. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. We're talking a little bit of Forex. We're going to talk some commodities. And I got crude up there, Teddy, with the 76.93 price point. What do you think about this crude action? Well, you know, since we talked last week, you know, for the past month, I've been, you know, it's been range bound in the 70 to 75 barrel was kind of my uh, target for it to be at. You know, I mean, obviously we have instability and, you know, what's going on in the Middle East, but that really seem, doesn't seem to phase oil too much. Um, yeah. But we did have a nice breakout to the upside a couple days ago. So we uh, finally got above $75. Uh, I now here's where you have technicals that conflict um, right now obviously we're coming off a higher move low we just set a higher move high a couple of days ago short term I think that we have 
probably come to a nice area. I think we're going to probably have a little bit of a pullback. Am I bearish? Absolutely not. I think you got to look to buy the dips on it. I would just be cautious at this level where it's at right now. I think we have a nice. good chance of probably slipping back to about six to test where, you know, 675 was resistance. Now it's going to become like support, which it seems like, like it, it is. So yeah. maybe dip to like six down to maybe extreme of $74. And then if the, if the trend is true for the new trend, like you got to realize if the, the low that was set back in December, if that is now a, a longer term trend, low higher move low, then we are setting a bull tra trend up for the longer term going into the springtime you know sure. so and i think that right now i would look to be a buyer around 74 to 74 and a half if you're not long already i would be cautious if if you're what might be a good trade right now is to short ver going against the high from uh what was it on monday um so if you use that as your risk if you're bearish nice. and you want to see if you can catch a little dip i would yeah. not be it would not be short Below, above that high, above that high though if we take nice. out the swing high from uh, monday then i can see us going up to easily hitting 81 81 half and maybe have a little trouble there before we even head up to about 85 bucks a barrel then so it's a great take man i appreciate it as always teddy we'll talk to you next okay. week man all Thanks, right tommy take folks care. check out that tiger forex report always a great segment with our man teddy Stay tuned. We got quite a market. Basil Chapman's coming up next, folks. Live programming all day. My dad's back in the saddle from 3 till 4.